You are listening to the Moon Griffon Show podcast on KPL965.com. What's dangerous and stupid and can cost you 25 grand? Excavating without calling Louisiana One Call. So dial 811 before you dig. It's the law. News Talk 96.5 KPL, Bro Bridge, Lafayette, broadcasting from the Matthew James Tax Pro Studios. Find them online at MatthewJamesTaxPros.com. More Israeli troops are moving into Lebanon. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. While Hezbollah keeps firing rockets across the border. And the Israeli army confirming that a captain was killed during an ambush this morning in southern Lebanon. We do expect the casualty rates from that incident to rise. Fox's Trey Yingston, Haifa, Israel, that after Iran's missile barrage, President Biden's calling Iran destabilizing and dangerous. President, Vice President Harris, and the national security team say they are still assessing the damage from the attack. However, so far, it appears largely ineffective, especially after the U.S. helped Israel shoot down multiple missiles. While the White House insists Iran will face consequences, it's not saying exactly exactly what those would be. Fox's Mark Meredith at the White House. In the CBS News vice presidential debate last night, J.D. Vance and Tim Walls agreed the U.S. must support Israel while clashing on other issues. Kamala Harris started and said that she wanted to undo all of Donald Trump's border policies. Vance blaming the vice president for record illegal immigration. Tim Walls said Congress has a bipartisan solution. Donald Trump said no told them to vote against it because it gives him a campaign issue. And Walls called the former president a threat to democracy. He is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind? They also sparred over inflation, abortion rights, and more in the last scheduled debate before the presidential election. It's another day of misery for Helene victims. The hurricanes blamed for at least 161 deaths in six states. There are hundreds of people that are still missing, and search and rescue crews are out and about this morning and will be from the air and the ground. The power grid is still compromised. Fox Weather's Robert Ray near Asheville, North Carolina. There are still more than a million power outages, Florida to West Virginia. President Biden will visit North Carolina today. Vice President Harris will tour damage in Georgia. America's listening to Fox News. Hey guys, Donald Trump Jr. here. Let me ask you this. Does inflation feel worse than what we're being told in the news? That's because the official inflation rate doesn't tell the whole story. Since January 2021, the cost of living has increased by 17.9 percent. You can't get that money back. But what you can do is stop your losses today. How? By diversifying your savings into a gold IRA from my friends at Birch Gold Group. When you're done, your money will be parked in a tangible asset with a proven history. To see how it works, get your free info kit on gold IRAs by texting the word PROTECT to 989898. I trust Birch Gold. They provide an easy process to roll over your 401k or IRA into gold without losing your tax advantaged status. So text PROTECT to 989898. That's PROTECT to the number 989898 to get your free info kit on gold IRAs from Birch. It's time to win cash. Get your KPL News apps ready because here's your chance to win up to $30,000. Just enter the following code into your KPL News app where it says win cash and make sure you listen for more codes throughout the day because the more codes you enter, the better your chances. Here is your next code. Get ready because here's that code. Your 9 o'clock code is 253. 253 is your code for a chance to win cash with News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm Paul George of the Indiana Pacers. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. So I want you to learn to spot a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. I'm Paul George. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. Bikers Against Child Abuse empowers children to not feel afraid of the world in which they live. For more information, visit bacaworld.org. Our helpline is 866-885-9474. BACA, breaking the chains of abuse. This hour of the Moon Graffon Show is brought to you by Champagne's, located in the Oil Center. Champagne's, going the extra mile. 
The views expressed in the following show are those of the hosts or hosts only. They do not represent News Talk 96.5 KPL or Town Square Media. Welcome, Moon Graffon Show. It is hump day in the great state of Louisiana. If you'd like to be part of the program, Matthew James Business Tax Reduction Hotline, always 844-766-6607. You can email me, moon at moongraffon.com. All right, we're honored to have Governor Jeff Landry. I don't even, the count is getting so high, I don't even know how many times you've been on anymore, so we don't need to talk about that anymore. <laughs> but, but let's... Oh, let, no, let, no, wait, let, I ain't let you. Let me tell you something. I, I, no, you got to start keeping a count. I want you to give me a sticker. <laughs> just a little, little post-it note, like 50, 60, 70. No, it's... it's listen, we're gonna, I mean, we're going to send... The bar is going to be so high, it's going to be unbelievable. Yeah, um, by the way, by the way, you've, you've already uh, came on two billion times more than Bell Edwards and Bobby Jenner. Just letting you know, two billion times more, <laughs> and you ain't even been on that much. Look, I appreciate you coming spending time. Yesterday, your, your, your big uh, announcement was uh, tax reform and... And as I talk to people about it and I, and, I, and, I, and I get a chance to visit with people, uh, nobody has tried to do this in the 31 years I've been sitting here, not even close to what you're doing. So whether somebody agrees or disagrees, to me at this point is not the point. What I want you to do, though, Governor, is explain without many, many interruptions, <laughs> explain what you want to do, why you're doing what you No, seriously, I, I do. I want to I yeah, no, listen no, to your listen, presentation. Listen, I, look, <clears throat> okay, look, 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 look. Here's what we know. We know in Louisiana, we have seen this. I mean, it, it's been consistent. Farts and fits, booms and busts. And every time we have that, everybody, you know, while the working man and woman is out there <clears throat> trying to earn a living, trying to raise a family, trying to stay in this state, and we know that most of them are leaving, people come to this capital and the special issues come around and they're all working for themselves. And they're not, <clears throat> I don't blame them. I would if I could, Right. And so we end up with a we end up fixing the crisis or whatever crisis we have at the time with some sort of patchwork. It's like it's like putting things together with a bubble, with bubble gum and duct tape. We know that there are states in the South that have that when they have embraced complete tax reform, their states have improved economically, like the state of North Carolina. Look. <clears throat> 10, 20 years ago, North Carolina instituted tax reform, okay? At the time, an average family's medium income in North Carolina was only about $2,000 higher than Louisiana's. Today, it's 11000 Over 10 years, that's, that's $99,000. That's, that's roughly $100,000 more mm-hmm. for a family in Louisiana. What could they have done with $100,000? And this, this plan, and we've been working real hard on it. Okay, look, we've got our critics. I get that. There are going to be some people that don't like it, like everything in it. It's not about, we're not gonna, but we're not going to make perfect the enemy to good. And that's what I'm asking the public to concentrate on. I want them to just take a breath and take a look at it. Because here's what we do. We provide for an immediate increase in take-home pay for every Louisiana taxpayer. So everybody gets more money in their pocket. We provide a flat Income tax rate of 3% for every Louisianian in the current two top brackets of their income tax. tax. And we virtually eliminate the bottom bracket. We protect the working poor, the middle class, by dramatically improving the standard deduction in Louisiana to $12,500. That's an extra $8,000 that's not going to be taxed. Okay? For our seniors... For our seniors, because we would love our seniors to stay. We'd like to attract seniors to Louisiana. We double, we double the retirement income tax exemption. We then more closely align the state sales tax with the local sales tax base. Okay, one of the reasons we have this, some people say we got the highest sales tax rate in the country, but we really don't when you look at all the exemptions on it and the way that 
locals are not allowed to tax at the same rate as the state. So we line those up, right? Okay. We eliminate dozens of sales tax preferences, all right? Increasing fairness. So we go from taxing labor to raising revenue over for your choices. That that is a conservative principle. One hundred percent because they're all my life. This is like the laughter curve, right? Yep. Okay. You lower the rates, broaden the base. All right? Okay. We 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 and you're gonna love this one. Boom. We're gonna tax the lobbying services. Come on, you gotta like that one. <laughs> you got I mean you gotta do us a page with the fact that we really need to tax the lobbyists. Yeah, they right? they uh they've been they've been making out like man, there's no doubt about it. Okay, we make the partial business utility exemption permanent. We repeal the corporate franchise tax. We drop the corporate tax rate from 7.5 to 3.5. Mm-hmm. Just that, they tell us, is going to improve our competitiveness. Okay? If the voters, and then we, and then we, put, if we put an entire rewrite of Article 7 of the Constitution. Now, look, remember, me and you talked about this. We wanted to refresh our entire Constitution. Okay? We didn't get there. That's okay. Doesn't mean we got to pack our stuff up and go away and just sit at the bottom. Right? Yep. We refresh Article 7, which modernizes our funds and property tax exemptions, which then gives the legislature more flexibility to meet future fiscal issues years to come. It's not a solution. I mean, it's a solution. It's not a patch. Okay? With voter approval, we'll provide the local governors an option to do away with the inventory tax. Let me tell you something. That inventory tax is one of the biggest problems Louisiana has. One of them. Okay? And, but the good news is we don't try to, we're not telling everybody they got to get rid of it. Because there's some parishes out there that say, well, we can't get rid of it. We don't, listen, you don't have to. But there are parishes out there, especially the rural parishes, especially the parishes that are struggling most, really don't even collect an inventory tax. But businesses won't locate there because of that tax structure. They want to get rid of it. We give them away. We vote approval. Like I said earlier, we're going to double the standard deduction for our seniors. With voter approval on the constitutional amendments, we're going to provide for a permanent teacher pay raise. And here's what's important. Here's this is this is a good part. This teacher pay raise is going to be paid using the one-time URL payments from funds. So what happens is the state has been paying on retirement. Uh, liability for these parishes. We're going to pay that down up front, and for that, the parishes are then going to be required to give those teachers a pay raise. That's where the pay raise should come from. Yeah. All of this, collectively, look, PAR has looked at the package. They like it. The Tax Foundation says it takes us from the bottom of the, the, the bottom 10 to the top 10. Now, like, tell me, if you don't have a vested special interest that we're getting rid of, why would you like to pay it? Mm-hmm. Jeff, the, the, one of the things I didn't, and, and, I, and I, I visited with somebody yesterday who was very informed on the plan, uh, and like I told him, I said, I'm not against anything trying to change the state of Louisiana. I'm not. I'm telling you up there. I'm telling everybody. There were always some things that I, I kind of questioned. So here's the question for you. This, and to me, this is a big one. This, you, may can, you may can explain it, though. That's why I'm asking. I yep. looked at the plan. The one thing that I don't see in this plan that maybe you can explain is there's two sides of the ledger. There's a revenue ledger. And it seems like that's mm-hmm. all we ever worry about is the revenue side. But there's a spending side. And the spending side doesn't get cut a whole lot, if any. And I'm not talking. Now, listen. I'm not talking about no less oh, yeah. federal money. I'm not talking about uh, taking the spending and we're gonna lower the spending over here. I mean the, the revenue over here. I'm talking about the spending side of the ledger doesn't seem to get addressed nearly as much as we need to. Now, h- how do you answer that? Because that's that's one of the big questions. Okay. Oh, no, oh, look, look. I got. I got oh, last before I answer that question, I want to remind. We also we also make permanent with voter approval a permanent exemption on prescription drugs for both sales and local tax. And that, that's important. I want, I, want, I want to put that point in there because uh, people, especially our seniors. But we don't have that anyway, do we? Maybe. I mean, we don't have that anyway. Oh, no, 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 no. 
we, oh yeah, no, we pay, we allow our locals to tax prescription drugs at the local level. We're doing away with that. Okay, so we, the, we, okay, we the local that. level. Okay, I'm sorry, the state okay. level did away with that. Well, we a while take back. away with that. The same way it did away. Right. So we extend that out with voter approval. But let me tell you something. No one covered the fact that when we presented an executive budget, we asked for a $3.3 billion reduction in the budget. We got a $2 billion one. And nobody gave us credit. Well, I, I, but how much of that was directed related to the well, federal government? Well, well, but moon. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Most of, well, no, no, but you, yeah, well, it is because most of our, but, but guess what? Most of our budget is based on federal dollars, but those federal dollars <laughs> have state matching. Those federal dollars cost the state as well. There's savings in, in, inside it. On top of the fact that I've only been here for 10 months, I had to inherit the last administration's budget, I had to put something together on the fly. There is no one who has better fiscal conservative <coughs> credentials than myself. So look, here's what I'll tell you. Here's what I have watched. I watched it in Washington, and I watched it in the state capitol. You're right. There are two sides to the ledger. ledger. And you know what? They should be addressed independently. Independently. Okay, let me do this. Using let me do this, Governor. I got to take a break. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure you got time. I know you do. Uh, I want to come back. And let's, you, let's, yeah. there, I know, but let's talk about the spending side because I really want you to address that side idea. for me. Yeah, absolutely. That, when okay. we come back, right. let's do that. All right. Governor Jeff Landry, who's okay. kind enough to come on the Moon Graffon Show. <laughs> like most governors don't. Uh, no, we come back. How many times, Moon? Tell them. I, at least a dozen already, at minimum. Maybe, what I said, compared to them, a billion. We'll take a break, be right back. When you think about how you spend your money in retirement, what comes to mind? Probably travel, sunny beaches, and spoiling your grandchildren? But a recent survey found that over 30% of every dollar a retiree spends goes to taxes. Baby boomers were told for years to save money in their IRAs and 401ks and pay taxes later. Well, now that day has arrived, and boomers are shocked to see a third of their money going back to Uncle Sam. John Blanchett and the Matthew James Financial Group can help. What if you could protect all or most of your retirement wealth from future tax rate increases, achieve a zero or near zero effective tax rate for most of your retirement years? Find out more. 337-366-8366. Isn't it time you got a second opinion on your wealth and retirement outlook? Learn how you could potentially kick the IRS out of your IRA. 337-366-8366 and online at MatthewJames.com. Louisiana is unique. The food, the festivals, even the bugs. It's termite season. Did you know termites are responsible for over $1 billion worth of damage in Louisiana alone? For over 60 years, J&J &J Exterminating has been shielding homes and businesses. 100% guaranteed against termites, pests, and mosquitoes. Louisiana-owned, customer-focused, J&J Exterminating. Call them today, make the pests go away. J&J Exterminating. Get the shield. Yeah. Folks, you heard us talk about Raging Cajun, the original Cajun seasoning, and Raging Cajun delicious line of gumbo, black eyed peas, shrimp and grits, jambalaya, seafood bisque, etouffee, red beans, roux, jalapenos. Raging Cajun's products are made right here in Acadiana now. Thanks to all of y'all, Raging Cajun is one of the fastest growing brands in grocery stores. Raging Cajun, the original Cajun seasoning. Forget the rest, ask for the best. Ask them for that Raging Cajun. It's good, folks. Trust me. I love it. You will, too. Hey, folks, if you... Diane from Michigan, a disabled senior citizen trying to get by. Henry from Florida, a veteran fighting to make ends meet. Elena from Arizona, a mother struggling to feed her daughter. Hi, I'm Connie Britton, and I support Feeding America because they help provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year, like Diane, Henry, and Elena. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show, Matthew and James Business Tax Reduction Hotline. Governor Jeff Landry, our special guest. Uh, big, big tax reform. He brought it out yesterday. Of course, it got to go through the process. All right, Governor, I want to go back. 
to the one thing nobody wants to talk to me about is the spending side of the ledger. Well, I want to talk to you about it. I know because I, I want I want to know about the spending because that to me well, means well, everything. Well, I want to go. I want to go back to something you said earlier. Oh, you know, I tell you that we asked for a three point three billion dollar budget. We got a three point three billion dollar reduction. We get a two billion dollar reduction. He said, "Well, that's federal money." Well, let me ask you a question. You think if the last administration was still in charge, we'd have two billion dollar reduction? No, we'd have two billion dollar increase. Okay. <laughs> Okay, right. <laughs> There's no well, doubt in my exactly. mind. Exactly. Right. But, but so Jeff, I don't, I don't want you to compare. I don't want you to compare against him. The hell with him. He was bad. That's it. No. Well, I know, but Boone. But I mean, for God's sakes, no one can give us credit when we make when we make incremental changes, and that's not incremental. Two billion dollars is not an incremental change. Okay, now let me remind you too. When I was in Congress, let me take all these listeners back. Fourteen years ago, I was in Congress. I returned me along with many of the members who actually became the Freedom Caucus um, in Congress, returned a significant amount of money in our budgets, in our own member allowances, returned to the federal treasury. And let me tell you, so we had to fight with them to, to return the money. It was several hundred thousand dollars. You go back and look at the article. As the attorney general, we worked on damn near almost a, a static budget, okay, as much. And it takes time. It takes time, Moon. And so both sides of the equation, you are correct. There are two sides of the equation. But they must be addressed individually right now. They have to be addressed individually. And what I don't understand is when we have a plan, okay, that talks about the tax side, the business environment, the way to make Louisiana more competitive and bring more jobs in, we're going to say no because we're not addressing the expense size right now. Okay, can I, let me, let me. Let me. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Well, why, we can't, why can't conservatives, listen, the people in the state move, gave Republicans and conservatives an opportunity to govern. And let me tell you what has happened. Traditionally, you know what we do? We do a terrible job. You know why? Because we seem to only be able to say no, and we can't say yes, even, even when the plan embraces every conservative principle. That's a problem. Every so you look at the plan and say, oh, I like the plan, but let's address expenses. We are going to address expenses. But we started addressing expenses in January. Mm-hmm. Our cabinet is working ferociously to try to find efficiencies, to try to find savings. And you know what? I challenged the legislature, in fact, I talked to the speaker, who's great at this too, to have those members come dig into the bureaucracy and work through it. But here's what I'll tell you. When you do it the way that maybe you would like to do it or some of the others want to do it, you know what happens? You throw this whole building in political chaos and we lose. Because the, because the middle-managed bureaucrats inside the state government will go and cut the things that people care about the most, to protect the other stuff. The whole place is in chaos. Everybody's trying to fill the holes in the budget, and nothing happens. I, 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 if y'all just stick I, with me, if y'all just, I'm just telling you, if y'all would just say, hey, you know what, why don't we just give, I think what you do, you got three more, you got three and a half years to ride my back, okay? And I certainly expect you to do it. But that ain't what I normally ride. That ain't normally what I ride. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jeff, but, listen but, to me. But, I want but, you to understand something. Thinks- I don't I don't want you to be defensive with me. I'm telling you that I'm not against what you're trying to do. I'm picking off a few things that bother me. And let's go to the spending. We've been talking. We had not addressed mm-hmm. the spending, the ledger. I know what happens in government. I've watched it. They dress, They don't address the spending. They address the revenue. And when they get revenue, more revenue, they never go address the spending well, that you need to address. But, but go ahead, the budget's but, fine. Well, what about the spending cuts but, over there? And I don't think that's being but, addressed. And that's just my opinion well, of what I'm looking at today. Well, what I knew because you're not being fair. You're not looking at the things we've already done. Because, because, because I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm going to work. I'm going to work to change your vernacular. It's not about spending cuts, all right? There's never been a cut that I haven't seen restored. 
Because that's the problem. It's a cut. You don't like to be cut. When you get cut, your body restores you. That's a natural inclination. The problem with government is we should be forcing government to find efficiencies, cost savings, root out the fraud, the waste, and the abuse. I remind you, when I first became the Attorney General, we created a um, fiscal responsibility project. We tasked every one of our employees at the Attorney General's office to go out there and find the savings. And we said, if you could find the savings, we'll reward you for it. And we did. And those things take, and we're working on those exact same what? things now. Look, we streamlined, hold on, we streamlined the Department of Economic Development. We've streamlined the Department of Natural Resources. We're getting ready to completely reorganize the Department of Transportation. All of those things will pile up to create the efficiencies and the savings that allow us to do more with less. To take the dollar and to stretch it out. However, let me let me let, me let me do this. Let me do this, Governor. I'm gonna come back and, and this is where I want to go with you. I want to talk about, rest- okay. is there any way in the budget that you're talking about? I think it needs to be cut by half a bit, but that's me. Is there any way you can talk about how we're restraining the growth of government? That that would be something that would be yeah. good. Let me, let me come back. I'll give you a few yeah. minutes and we'll be right back. Jeff Landry, Governor Jeff Landry, my special guest. With five locations, I always make it a point to visit Superior Grill. I love the food there. It's authentic Mexican food with a Louisiana twist. That menu has all your favorites, nachos, quesadillas, enchiladas, tacos, fajitas, mm, hand-cut steaks, and the best margaritas in the state. You go to Superior for lunch or dinner, and folks, you're going to thank me for it. My lovely bride and I eat at Superior Grill every chance we get. They're on Line Avenue in Shreveport, Government Street, and Holland Road in Baton Rouge, and they're on St. Charles Avenue in New Orleans. But look, their new location in Lafayette is now open. Lafayette, you've been clamoring for it, and now they are open on Collie Saloon. I want to see Superior Grill packed with folks from Acadiana. The best Mexican food with a Louisiana twist is found at Superior Grill. Shreveport, Baton Rouge, and New Orleans, and now Acadiana on Collie Saloon in Lafayette. This is Moon Griffon. I will see you at Superior Grill. This is Moon Griffon talking about another great Louisiana company, Hudco Roofing. Louisiana has some pretty crazy weather at times. Torrential rains, gusty winds, especially up north. Hail and, of course, hurricanes. You got to remember your roof protects everything, you and your family and most of your possessions. And that's where Hudco Roofing comes in. These folks aren't just your average roofers. They're the number one roofing company in the state. Whether you need a repair or a brand new roof, Hudco Roofing has you covered. Hudco is a certain teed select shingle master and takes every roof all the way down to the decking to make sure there's no hidden damages. Hudco Roofing is also a state certified installer of the Fortified Roofing System. And that's a big deal, especially during hurricane season. Hudco specializes in residential and commercial roofing systems and coatings. Anywhere in Louisiana, you can get a free roof inspection and quote from Hudco Roofing. So go to HudcoRoofing.com. This is Moon Griffon. I trust Hudco Roofing of Louisiana, and so can you. Hey, folks, it's Moon Griffon. Looking for uncommon talent? Meet the grads of life. They're not the typical candidates you're used to, but they're exactly who your company needs. An ideal fit for entry-level positions, internships, and even mentorships. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn more. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help you help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Brought to you by understood.org and the Ad Council. This hour of the Moon Graffon Show is brought to you by Champagne's. Located in the Oil Center, Champagne's going the extra mile. Hi, hello. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you back with us. 844-766-6607 is the number. If you'd like to be part of the program, it is a Matthew James business tax deduction hotline. All right, uh, Governor, uh, so 
it's, I, I, I'm still going to the spending cuts. And, I, and listen, I'm, <laughs> listen to me. I'm not against what you're trying to do. I'm for Jeff Landry oh, no. and what he's trying to do. Understand, I'm not taking a side on this, and I'm not going to. I would rather be with you. Get, but the spending part matters to me, so let's go this way. What about spending okay, restraints? Well, let's, what about that? Let's, let, let, can we start off by you saying, because you recognize, you said, okay. you said it, not me, but you said it in this last segment. You said, there's no doubt if the last administration was here, the budget would have grew by $2, two billion rather than be reduced by two I, I believe that. Because you say, you know, well, okay, well, I, I, we get no credit for that? Yeah, but, but Jeff, yeah, I'm not worried about credit. Yeah, I want credit. something but, to be done. What about it is credit? But that is, I mean, $2 billion, Lou? That's somebody's money? Can, can we start off? Why would we do this? Look, one of the things we do in this plan is paying down debt. Paying down debt, which ultimately creates more savings. Again, that's a government reduction. Mm -hmm. We do away with a bunch of different credits. We we don't you want Louisiana families to have more money? Well, you've been complaining. I know. I've listened about the business environment out there. This is a plan that the tax foundation says takes us from the bottom to the top. And yet, instead of and I, look, I'm not the spending side. Why don't we? Why don't we stabilize the tax reform? And I tell you what, Moon, the minute we get this thing passed, the minute we pass, now listen, I'm the one who scored this, okay? All of the good government groups said this is a great plan. The tax foundation says it takes us from the bottom to the top. Every business corporation out there says, man, this would make Louisiana equally competitive with its southern neighbors to join an economic progress that those neighbors are having. Why don't we stabilize so our businesses can grow? And then I'll tell you what, me and you, collectively, with this great legislation we got, can work on can work on creating efficiencies and savings in government so we restrain it in a way that we want. Listen, Moon, nobody wants to do it more than me. We got we got an infrastructure problem. Yeah, no. Oh, you got you inherited you inherited and, and, and you inherited a lot of crap. I agree. But Jeff, but Jeff, so what, I'm, what I'm trying to, but, but what I'm trying to do, okay, is I'm trying to get us to quit doing what we've been doing because we're failing in the way that we've been doing it before. And, 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 so and, and that would be, you, that would be an accurate and, statement. That would be an accurate and, statement. And, and, me, and, and me and you and every conservative out there and every conservative that voted and then sent one of these conservative legislators here, and we got a good crop. We all have recognized that the best way to pull Louisiana out of its slump is to grow our economy. I tell you what, you want to reduce the size of government? Reduce the number of people on Medicaid. Take people from dependence to independence. You want to fix our insurance problem, our health insurance problem? Take people off of Medicaid and move them on to private insurers. Well, guess what? You don't move people from dependence to independence if they don't have good jobs. Think about if the number of average, average, the number of middle class families in the state of Louisiana, and imagine if they had an additional hundred thousand dollars to spend over the last over the over the last ten years. And that's what this plan does. Jeff, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. Working I'm, on the budget. I know, but, but, I, but guess what? If we if we but, but what y'all are trying to do, boom, it's just, just it is. No, I ain't no y'all. Ain't no y'all. All I'm doing is asking no, questions. No, 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 but no, no, no listen. You listen. You listen. Own it too many. Look, let's concentrate. Let's talk about. Look, go pick apart the tax reform. I'm not picking it apart. I'm asking. I, I've never seen tax reform work, Governor, without spending being addressed. And when every time I've heard well, spending's going, North, listen, that's not true. When I heard South Carolina did, spending, in Arizona it did, in in all of the states that did the tax reform, they did it the way we're doing it. Well, spending they did not allow people. They, they they took the two ledgers you talked about because you're right. I'm not telling that you you wrong. What I'm telling you, but I'm not beating up your plan. Process. Well, I, I know you're not. I, I don't have any intention to beat it up. Is, well, no, no, no. But the problem is, is that you're confusing the two. That's the problem. The problem is, is that when folks out there don't stick to the roots of the problem in those different lanes, 
then we don't have the ability to address it. And the people who do not want us to succeed win because they confuse the oh, no. people in the state who, guess what, uh, uh, who don't have the time nor the energy to, to try to to try to wade through the bureaucratic mess. That's what they're like, they're, they're officials. But I've never, seen, they, I've never seen it work without addressing government spending. Ronald Reagan did the stuff you talked uh-huh. about, but he addressed it. He, ad- he addressed it. He addressed government spending, and we took off, and government got even more money, and then they kept spending all that and whatever else they got. Is there, let me go to this route then. Is there any, on the expenditure side, is there any limits on how much y'all going to put on what you can spend from government? I'm just curious, that because that's important too to me. Well, well, here's the thing. I haven't had an opportunity to figure out what that limit responsibly would be. Mm-hmm. But I tell you what I have done. I have, through executive order after executive order, immediately with our cabinets, continued to push our cabinet-level secretaries to find efficiencies and savings inside of the government, and we are making progress. It's 10 months. 10 months. And, of course, within those 10, we're back in a crisis. That, oh, look, the last administration wants this, Moon. They put us in this position. Oh, I know that they did. Simply to see if we would fail. Because they are betting on, they are, what are they betting on? They're betting that we do the things that we've always done, which is fight with each other, eat each other. Nothing gets done. The size of the government continues to grow. Our tax policy continues to remain bad. And businesses continue to flee Louisiana. And what I'm betting on, and listen, here's the great news. If I'm wrong, then the people can throw me out. Here, here's, what I, here's, what, here's what I don't want, and I, and, and I don't want this for you. I don't want, because I know where you're starting at, and I know your fight. The Democrats will never vote with you. And I'm worried about your Senate president, Cameron Henry, and some of the people in the Senate. Okay? So my problem is I'm looking where you're starting at. Most things get negotiated down. And a watered-down version of what you got worries me. That's the, one of the oh, things I worry because you cannot but, have something watered down. But, but, That's the problem. But, but let me tell you. But, Moon, let me tell you something. This is where people like me and you, this is where, it, this is how we win, okay? When we concentrate on this plan, when I mean it, when you pick this plan apart, which I want you to, when you deep, when you d- dive deep down in it, and you talk about, and you might find something that we missed, and I tell the legislators that too, we got 30 days just about before I bring them in a session. And w- but when you, if we find something we need to fix, you let us know about it. But when you look through it and you get people on board, you say, you know what, business will say this is going to be good. Mm-hmm. Okay, now listen, the special interests out there. I want to tell you something. The special interests are coming, as well as those that don't want us to succeed. But I tell you what, when you go out there and you educate the public on how great this plan is, because it is great. Okay, I'm not the one that's that. I don't have to prove to you that the tax foundation said it is. Which, is, which has been the limit test that we've mm-hmm. all been trying to meet, okay? And you know what? When we hold our hands together, when we link our arms together, when we pass this thing, the stronger conservatives get around this plan, the harder it is for those who want to see us fail and allow us to fail. You can want, look, I, I, look I, got, I got it. I'm, look, I'm meeting with the Senate today. I don't know why they would be against. I don't have many senators that want to do this too. The House is 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 in it, you know. And look, there are some things. Yes, you know, people say, well, you know, we're gonna have the point for five, but we're lowering the income tax. That's what we always wanted to do. Well, let me, and, Jeff. You yeah, got to understand something. You got to understand well, something. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not against a beating up. You know what I'm doing? I'm a guy that heard about it. I'm a guy that's reading it. I'm a guy that understands better than some, not all. And I'm a guy asking questions. That's all. No, not against I anything that you said. I'm just, that. I just know when I look at tax reform, if the spending side of the ledger is not going to get addressed or get addressed the last part of it, it worries me. Because let's say you pass well, everything in the special session. We get it on. A, you got a constitutional amendment vote as well in March. And everything passes. You go to the legislature and the legislature doesn't finish the job. You might have something that's a problem. 
And so that's why I, th- well, I wish. Now, you're right, though. It has well, to be addressed with the legislature. I get that. Well, well but, Lou, my record, we didn't start. I think it's, I, think it's that, I don't believe that's a very accurate statement. We didn't start with the revenue side. I started at the beginning of this year asking for a $3.3 billion reduction. And then nobody's giving me credit for it. Okay, like we started, we started with executive orders. We started with working in these, in in trying to create these efficiencies. You even admitted, which is true, that we inherited a mess. A mess. Hey, you know, I knew you was inherited with you. And by the way, there were some Republicans in the House and Senate that were leading the charge to make sure you had a mess. Hey, do you have a few more minutes? Because I've got to take a break. Or do you need to go? I do. I do. All right. Just stay no, one no, more. No, I do. I'll, I'll give you. Yeah. Stay one no, more I'll segment. It got time. about about seven, eight minutes. Is all. all right. Jeff Landry, Governor Landry, explaining what what he wants to do, what he want to try to what he wants to try to accomplish uh, with a big, big fiscal reform package. So we will take a break. Be right back. You're listening to the Moon Reform Show. I've been telling you about Schumacher Homes for a long time. Now, for a limited time, you can choose from five different financing offers and pick one that works best for you. Whether you're an active duty, military, or veteran, you can take advantage of the exclusive VA construction loan offer. You can lock in 30-year fixed financing for as low as 3.875. How about that? Looking to stay in your home and start construction right away? A stay-in-your-home loan might be right for you. With this option, you can stay in your home during construction and not worry about moving twice. And for you first-time home buyers, we're not going to forget you. For a limited time, they're offering 30-year fixed financing as low as 3.875. Other financing offices include no-cost refinancing, conventional loans, and FHA construction loans. If you're thinking of building your dream custom home, there's no time like the present to start building. SchumacherHomes.com. SchumacherHomes.com. Let them build your dream home. They're building dream homes one at a time. With the summer heat here, let's talk about your AC. You're looking for a reliable, locally owned company that you can trust? Call Adapt Concepts AC and Heating. They have been serving all of Acadiana, the surrounding area in the Gulf of Mexico, for over six years. For your home or business, Adapt Concepts AC and Heating has you covered with certified technicians specializing in everything from residential to large commercial HVAC systems available 24 7. These guys are focused on providing professional quality work and ensuring customer satisfaction every step of the way. You want the professionals? You want the best? This is them. Don't miss this summer special. 0% financing, up to $3,000 off qualifying high-efficiency equipment. Not only that, they will throw in a free 12-year port and labor warranty. That's right, 12 years port and labor. Wow. Don't you want to know more about them? Call them at 337-408-8202. That's 337-408-8202. Or go to the website, adap-ac.com. That's adap-ac.com. If you've been injured, it doesn't matter if you were hit by a big truck, a smart car. You don't need to get a second job as a stuntman to save money. We need a new stuntman. You just need FeedThePig.org. Don't get left behind. Get tips and tools at FeedThePig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Matthew James, Business Tax Reduction Hotline. Welcome back to the Moon Graffon Show. It's an honor to have Governor Jeff Landry for the whole hour. I didn't even know we would get him this long. Jeff, thank you for uh, coming on. Hey, Jeff, people are asking me, this is just general public, and, and maybe it's not out yet, is there anywhere people can kind of go take a look at what you're proposing yet? I know you made it public yesterday, but just the average person out there, anywhere they can just kind of go start reading what you're trying to accomplish? I tell you what, I am going to find out if we have the slides that we gave. Uh, that's, that's kind of the summary pages. Yeah. Um, which is kind of, we've got like a four or five pager. Uh, I'll find out. I'm, I'm pretty sure we've got it online. Uh, if not, we'll, we'll make sure that we get it out there today. Um, look, Moon, I tell you, here's what's interesting. We, we have, in 10 months, had the biggest impact on public safety, biggest change in crime in, in a long time. We've made historical changes 
in education. The advocate. Now, Ooh, now look, that was advocate. Well, that, go ahead. <laughs> the devil's advocate said that this would be the biggest tax change since 1974. Now, here's the question I have for you. What are the parts of the plan that you like? I love the, well, there's a lot to like. There's, I love the flat tax. I love the no tax on prescription. When you look, I mean, but what do you, I mean, do you like the fact that we get rid of the corporate inventory? I mean, the corporate franchise. A lot of good things on the Do you like the fact that we lower, do you like the fact that we lower the personal income tax uh, by virtually eliminating the bottom back? I do. Taking the, combining the two, flattening it down. Listen, do you know, watch this move. Do you know that if this bill, if if this, if this package passes, Louisiana will have the lowest personal income tax of those states that have an income tax. Mm-hmm. Huh? How no. do you like that? No, that, I think, and, I think, and, and I you, think you Jeff, you, you know, have. You know, you know what else I believe? You know what else I believe? I'm going to tell you something else I believe. And, 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 of course, this this should help. This should help, you know, feed some of your anxiety, which I know. Listen, I understand. Nobody believes People anymore. I got it. I'm trying to change that. But let me tell you the part that you're going to really like. This plan, I believe, gets us an opportunity to eliminate the personal income tax. At least, now, I'd say by 2030. Others say we could be tax free by 2033. Okay? But guess what? We won't reach that plan. We wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to say that. If I thought I was going to grow the size of government rather than restrain the size of government, make sure that our government has efficiencies and, and cost savings and do those things that makes us have a responsible government. Okay. Here's and, my, and, here's my and, response and, to that. Here's my response. First of all, uh-huh. I'm glad you brought it up about do you like what's in the plan because I wanted to get to the end of the deal and say, yes, Jeff, there's a lot of good things in this. There's, there's really some things to sink your teeth into it. Here's what I know from a guy who's done this a long time. You can create a plan that creates prosperity and businesses and everything starts to grow. But if you never address the spending, it doesn't matter how much money you bring in. They're going to spend every damn penny of it. And it's going to be a same problem, different year. And that's why I talk to you about the spending side of the ledger and about the growth side of the ledger. Because the bottom line, you know this yourself, when you, if you pass this, let's say you get it exactly like you want it. And I hope you do if you really feel it. And I know you feel strong about it. People have to see results. Businesses have to see results. People have to see more money in their pocket. You, this will be judged on, because when I talked to a representative from North Carolina, uh, Governor, he was on here, I don't know, a few months ago, and he said they started working on it as in like 2010, 2012. And even this year, they had to pass some more stuff. Because what will happen is we pass a plan and there's more things you have to pass up the road to keep it going. And then everybody celebrates, but we don't do the next step. You know, a few years ago, they said we had, we had tort reform. And I'm not going there with you today, but they said we had tort reform. It's going to lower rates, and it didn't. And uh, by the way, I said it wouldn't. And yet they never moved the needle again one-tenth of one inch. That's what I mean. There's some other things you'll have to do up the road if you want to do it. And, and because people have to feel what you're doing. They have to feel it. Well, Moon, here's what I tell you. You have a new me to relax. My wife says I can't. Right? I mean, she says I'm, I'm, I'm incapable of doing that. <laughs> so at least for the next four years, at least for the next four years. Now, listen, I did it four years. The people in Louisiana may, they may send me to the house. But I can tell you one thing. Whether they seven dollars and four or they give me eight, I'm not going to relax. And I believe with that guy from North Carolina came because you know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to set a pace so that we do exactly what you say, so that we don't take our eye off the ball, so that we because because the problems we have are cultural. Okay, they have been inherited, like you said, and the only way to change those things. It's to stay the course. It's to not give up. And I'm not. And that's why I put this say, look, look, I can promise you, it is, it is, it was not fun to have to call those legislators back in in November. All right? There's, you know, now there's some of them that, that they, they're ready. They're ready. They better run through the wall for people from Louisiana because mm-hmm. they want to put more money in the pockets of the people of Louisiana, and that's what this plan does. 
This plan, at the end of the day, will put more money in the pocket of every Louisiana out there. Uh, Governor, real quick, real quick, so people... It teaches a pay raise, yeah. So people understand, you got to have the session. It has to be passed. You got to come back in the, in the spring that would have vote because there'll yep. be some constitutional stuff you got to mark. And you have to have a session to finish it out. This is not something y'all doing in November and people are going to feel it. It's got a process. And it's probably, I'm going to guess, a minimum of six or seven months for the process to work its way through. I just want, I don't want people to jump us so in November. I don't feel anything. So the process takes right. a little bit of a while. Am I right? But, but, but well, but I'll tell you, we'll tell you this. They will, here's the one thing. They will, people will see an increase and home pay by January 1st. They will. That's how quick that will come into play. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, the ability to do all the other things that we talked about um, um, would be, may take a little more time and, and would be subject to whether or not we pass the constitutional amendment. And here's the good news. The good news is that you should go ahead today, before we get on this segment, let's pick a number of how many times you think I've been in so you can put it on your little <laughs> sticky note. Because... <laughs> Because, 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 look, what you said is a complete truth. It's a process, which means I'm coming back on. Yeah. No, it is, I know it's a process. Again. And then we're going to talk about some of the other things. But so, so, so let's pick a number. Like, what's the number? What do I mean? You're going to be 12, <laughs> 8. I, mean, I told you, you. It depends. It depends on how you're doing you it. Shoot low. Listen, they said remote. No, 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 no. You told me it didn't matter what I was doing good or bad as long as I came on. Look. You pick the number, pick it low. That way I can keep working to, to make it even higher. Well, like I told you, this is not a criticism, but I think as a person, what I've done is ask a lot of questions, and I'll continue to do that. But that That's don't mean I, I don't support it. It don't mean I don't support it or do support it. I just, I'm trying to listen and hear the thing. So, all right, look, I got to run, Governor. Thank you. You're always welcome. What's my number, my room? Give it a number, 12. Let's just do 12. <laughs> all right. Walker said he just all put right. it in his phone, so we're good to go. All right. Thank Thanks you, Governor. All right. All right. All right. We're going to take, take a break. Care. More to come. <music> News Talk 96.5 KPEL, Brobridge, Lafayette, a town square media station, broadcasting from the Matthew James Tax Pro Studio. An emergency meeting at the U.N. Security Council. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News, the day after Iran's missile barrage. Israel will not stand by in the face of such aggression. Israel will respond. Ambassador Danny Danone right before the meeting where the U.S., Britain, and France condemned Iran. So did U.N. leader Antonio Guterres, but... He also spoke out against Israel's response to Hamas's terror attack last year. Israel has conducted in Gaza the most deadly and destructive military campaign in my years as Secretary General. The suffering endured by the Palestinian people in Gaza is beyond imagination. Oh, the fighting still rages in Gaza and in Lebanon, where eight Israeli soldiers were killed today battling Hezbollah, which keeps firing rockets into Israel. It's another day without power, cell service, or water for some Hurricane Helene victims. The lack of water in our school buildings and power in about half of our buildings is a major roadblock to bringing students safely back to school. Superintendent Maggie Furman in Nashville, North Carolina. President Biden will soon leave the White House to tour that devastation. Fox Weathers, Robert Ray's already there. There are many people People unaccounted for in these hills and mountains here in western North Carolina. Choppers will be moving across these hillsides very, very soon uh, as emergency officials will try to get aid to people. The storm is blamed for at least 161 deaths in six states. New York City Mayor Eric Adams is at a federal court for a hearing. The Democratic mayors pled not guilty to federal charges including wire fraud and bribery and insinuated he was singled out for refusing to toe the party line on issues like immigration and crime. Crime, a theory Donald Trump supports, saying when he saw Adams talking about illegal migrants about a year ago, he predicted he'd be indicted, adding, and I was exactly right. Trump claiming both he and Adams are the target of a politically motivated federal justice department. Lillian Wu, America's listening to Fox News. Hey, if you're in the market for a rifle, a shotgun, a revolver, you definitely want to go with the best in the business. And as far as I'm concerned, that's only one place, Henry Repeating Arms. You're going to be amazed by the quality craftsmanship, the buttery smooth action. It makes them a pleasure to shoot. 
Every one of my Henrys, accurate right out of the box. They've all been reliable ever since. Now, the best way to learn about Henry's 200 models, just go to their website. It's one word, henryusa.com. You'll get a free catalog. They'll send you free decals, a list of dealers where you are. And they have a great newsletter as well. And they showcase their Made in America firearms. Now, Henry's are backed by a lifetime warranty, 100% satisfaction. Made in America, not made at all. That simple. And if you have questions, you can call their award-winning customer service department. Speak with an expert that will help you. Make sure you go to henryusa.com, get your free catalog, free decals, a list of dealers where you are, henryusa.com, a great American. It's time to win cash. Get your KPL News app ready because here's your chance to win up to $30,000. Just enter the following code into your KPL News app where it says win cash and make sure you listen for more codes throughout the day because the more codes you enter, the better your chances. Here is your next code. Here we go. Your next code is 504. 504 is your code for a chance to win cash with News Talk 96.5 KPL. Court appointed special advocates or CASA are specially trained volunteers that help secure safe homes for abused and neglected children. Don't let these innocent victims slip through the cracks of our complicated legal system. Get involved today. Call CASA at 268 5111. This nonprofit organization moment brought to you by News Talk 96.5 KPL. The view- Views expressed in the following show are those of the hosts or hosts only. They do not represent News Talk 96.5 KPL or Town Square Media. Welcome back, Moon Graffon Show, Matthew James Business Tax Reduction Hotline, your opportunity to be a voice. I will tell you, because we had scheduled it, actually before I got the call with the governor, uh, Daniel Erspormer, and we're not going to be scrutinizing the governor's plan, so nobody can think that's not what's going to happen. But they had a plan. We're going to talk a little bit about tax reform, what it needs to look like. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, you will hear Daniel say the same thing I said. Uh, we're not against the governor's plan. We're not. We think that, boy, it's, it's bold and it's good. There's a lot of good things to like. Uh, I just I just got questions. All I was doing is trying to ask questions. I'm just trying to get the answer to some questions I think needs to be answered. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so, anyway, we're looking forward to business. But before we get there, we are honored to have State Treasurer John Fleming on. Brother John, what's up? Hey, Moon. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me today. And, uh, uh, you know, um, there's a lot of things we can talk about in the treasurer's office, but, but, I, I, as you know, I've been evangelizing that we fully repeal the personal income tax yep, and yep. cut the corporate income tax. And, uh, while, uh, the governor's plan does not do that, it does take a big leap mm-hmm. in that direction. And, uh, I know he says that we should be able to get all the way to repealing the personal income tax within seven to 10 years. I think if we address spending, I think we can get there much faster. And it's one of the reasons I keep talking about the spending side, but I'll go back and say uh, what, what Jeff's right about is it, it takes a while to do it. And that's why I brought up North Carolina. He did too. So that tells me they're trying to head this thing in the right direction and it's been heading the wrong direction. And Bella was put it on steroids in the wrong direction. And they heard Jeff coming in, uh, blank page Cortez and Shake Snyder led the charge to hurt Jeff. So it's even a bigger task now, and I give him all that, and that's why I still stand with him on you know, not everything Jeff's talking about doing, but I do stand with him. Now, as far as this goes, you know, I want I want something to happen, and I think we got to make something happen. So this thing's going to draw uh, the the problem with any of this stuff that you're trying to do is going to be the lobbyists. The problem you, is going to be the municipalities, and it's going to be the uh, – uh, the government guys, they just don't want to ever change anything. So with Jeff's well, fighting, with the governor's fighting, it's yeah. just absolutely changing a state that, my God, if we don't get off our rear ends, we're never going to get we're never going to get to the top. Uh, absolutely. Just a couple of touch points. Our budget has grown 80 percent in the last decade. 
uh, it, twice, twice the rate of inflation. There's absolutely no explanation for that. Uh, and you're right, we got a bunch of COVID money, like every other state did. And between uh, Bell Edwards and Shake Snyder, uh, they threw that money out there for grabs. And all those representative senators, I shouldn't say all of them, but far no, too many enough of them. them. Yeah, enough so, of them. Enough of them. They did a lot of damage. Uh, we process the cooperative endeavor agreements that come from those line item appropriations. So we actually see where this money goes, and it's eye popping. Uh, I'm just telling you, Moon. Uh, you, the, a number of NGOs that do uh, non governmental organizations that do who knows what and why and where does the money go and to whose benefit. There's nothing out there that measures the quality of what they do or whether they accomplish anything. No, it's just really a, a giveaway program. Uh, in many cases, there's some good things that come through it, but in many cases, it's a giveaway program. Oftentimes, I think, to people who are very well connected to that legislator, oh, yeah. and that's a practice that must end. And a lot of them get on boards and things of that nature, and they do business on the side. I fought with a guy yeah. one time. He doing business on the side, but he, oh, I ain't never got no money out of it. Whoa, 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 whoa. And the fact of the matter is because of his connections to government, trust me, it's helping his business. Just the way it is. I just, uh, look, I'm, I'm all for Jeff doing I and I think he's going to have to be tough and hanging out with the legislators. The other part is, uh, and I didn't get to talk to him about it, is I'm worried about the Senate, Cameron Henry, and that group. They seem to never be trying to change. They don't want to change anything. And uh, mm. that, so there's a, I think the House, uh, what I know about Philip the VA, what I watched about Philip, Philip's been pretty steady and tough. And I think Philip's going to hold a line on what we need to hold a line on. But you go to over there in the Senate, and we let the committees kill good legislation. That's your problem. Or you can't get 20 votes and you got 28 Republicans. That's the kind of things that, that we're looking at. Uh, to, to pass something like this. Well, absolutely. And, and once again, this is only a plan. Once mm -hmm. it, It's kind of like going into battle. Your battle plan ends when the battle begins, mm -hmm. and everything's up for grabs. And you're right, uh, the, the, the lobbyists are, are very powerful in Baton Rouge. I've been really surprised. You know, I, I, I dealt with lobbyists in, in Washington for years, but I've never seen uh, the power that lobbyists bring uh, the way they do in Baton Rouge. Once they get involved, it's going to be, again, uh, whose ox gets gored, who gets the beneficial exemptions, and who doesn't, and who gets the money, and who doesn't. Yeah. Uh, all that's going to be in play. So we can't assume that even though we have a governor who's powerful and who has a lot of influence right now over the legislature, if this is a done deal, this thing could be problematic. So that's why we lost him. Okay, why is it red? Walk up, press that button. Is it always red? Okay, hang up. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> he was he was going smooth, and then we lost it. Uh, same way we bring Fleming back. We do, we will have Earth Palm on, and Earth Palm wants to talk about his deal and, and what they're doing as well. Uh, and by the way, Daniel and them are, uh, they, they on board. I mean, they, 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 uh, they, they watch this. They look at policies. He talked a lot about a good thing. And I'm glad Jeff brought that up. I'm glad the governor brought up, Hey, what, what do you like about it? And there's a lot of things to like about the plan. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I just don't, uh, there he is. All right. All right. Johnny, you with me? Yes. All right. I don't know what happened. You were doing great. And then. Boom, you were gone. <laughs> oh, I, I, the call must have dropped. I apologize. No, you're good. You're good. But go ahead. But, well, I was just saying that, that uh, you know, this is, this is a great plan. I fully support the governor. It doesn't get us where we need to be, but it begins to travel. It begins the, the pathway to getting to a true pro-growth uh, economy. And you can't leap to no personal income tax in one bound. It just isn't practical or possible to do that. So I give I give the governor tremendous credit for this uh, for this plan. I think it's good, but you're absolutely right. Uh, there's plenty of opportunities in in cutting uh, spending, and I just gave you one example with the legislature, which again they're going to have a say in this, but also 
uh, you realize that we now have school choice that began that passed through. And in March, we're standing up a school transparency website that's going to provide a very user-friendly detail on every public school in Louisiana. And you're going to be able to see contracts. You're going to be able to see Good. Uh, how well these schools are, how poorly they're doing. And I think you're going to find a lot of waste in our school system. Yeah. Well, you know, they had a, they're looking at, I got to believe Department of Health and Hospitals, you can find the most waste. It's the most expensive. It has the most money coming to it, state and federal money, than any other department. And uh, Tony Bacala, who, by the way, I got to get on. He was supposed to come on this week. Uh, he talked about a $343 million cut right in that department. And he started bringing up stuff like $100 million for advertisement. So there are some things that we can do that I think we're going to have to look at. Uh, there's no doubt about it. John, uh, as far as the treasurer's office, uh, what's going on? Anything new with the treasurer's office? Well, uh, last week, we became the first state government to accept cryptocurrency as payment, which in this case was a wildlife and fisheries, uh, probably a hunting license. And uh, 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 now I've gotten some pushback to say, hey, that's bad to get involved. But look, when it hits our account, it's, it's American dollars. Mm -hmm. So there's no risk. But what we're trying to do is free up the economy and cryptocurrency is not controlled by the government, and uh, uh, we we would avoid any any attempts by the central government, that is in Washington, uh, that wants to create itself a digital currency uh, and then control your bank accounts. We resist that heavily, but we do believe in um, the ability to use gold and silver. That was passed as uh, recognized as legal tender. And also, again, cryptocurrency, we've begun accepting that. We want to make our currency and our economy as free as we can possibly do that. And so uh, we, we want to bring those innovations to state government. And, of course, you know the battles we've had. Um, uh, ExxonMobil, there was an attempt to decapitate leadership at ExxonMobil and turn it into a green energy company. Mm -hmm. uh, our, I led the, the, the defense on that. And we turn that back because the state of, of California's pension fund, Washington State, and Illinois were trying to do that. They wanted to bring, of course, ESG mm -hmm. uh, to, to Louisiana, and we resisted that. I also fought against Bank of America, which has been debanking citizens because uh, they may be selling or manufacturing firearms or Christian charity organization or involved in oil and gas. So, again, our battle is against the institutions that have become woke in this country and in this state, and we want to reserve uh, economic freedom for our citizens. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right. Anything else, John, real quick? Uh, no, I think that's great. Okay. Like I say, everybody needs to get engaged on these taxes. Good. I remember that the Trump tax cuts are going to expire in the next couple of years, which is why we need to elect Trump as our next president. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, uh, former Congressman John Fleming, but our state treasurer right here in the state of Louisiana. All right, sir, thank you so much. Let's do it again soon. Thank you, Boone. All right, yes, sir. All right, we'll take a break. Be right back. As Louisiana's only fiberglass manufacturer and fabricator, C-Safe Fiberglass Grading and Structural Systems has provided corrosion-resistant products to the Gulf Coast for over 45 years. Our fiberglass grading, cable trays, and structural shapes are ideal to replace corroded, rotting building products and can be custom fabricated by the best fiberglass craftsmen in the world, right here in Lafayette. Contact C-Safe or visit our website at csafe.com. That's S-E-A, like the ocean, S-A-F-E dot com. This is Moon Graffon. The biggest complaint about solar power is the battery storage. Well, no more. Now, Solar Louisiana offers giant battery storage solutions from the top names like Panasonic, LG, and more. Solar Louisiana will install residential home solar systems with enough battery storage to get you through any outages. And say goodbye to your electric bill as Solar Louisiana will custom fit a system to your electrical needs. Online at solarlouisiana.net. Net, your energy independence company, Solar Louisiana. 
If you've got some projects to do around the house and you need the voice of experience, a local voice, somebody that can help you and knows Louisiana, you need to check out Stein Home and Yard. They're a Louisiana company founded, established here. They've been based here. Their story dates back all the way to 1946. Stein Home and Yard has all the things you need to make your house ready for fall. Great deals on fall plants like mums, as well as all sorts of handy items you need for your house. Need to upgrade your power tool game? They've got great deals on DeWalt power tools. They also have great deals on grills for your next tailgate for the big game this weekend. Traeger Pellet Grills, Weber Grills, Charbroil, so many great brands. And it's all right there at your fingertips. Just pull them up, steinhome.com. Steinhome.com is where you need to go to find the greatest deals on your home improvement needs. Steinhome.com, a great Louisiana company. Like. Foundation Repair, 800-256-1010. Louisiana-owned Atlas Foundation Repair, 800-256-1010. Call Tony Arpino. I have known him for years. Hey, Daniel Ernst Palma. How you doing, son? I'm doing great. You know, How are Daniel, you? And, and you, you say, well, Moon's coming in here. He's laughing and joking. Yeah, that's to keep from crying. I just, uh, you know, since, Ob- <laughs> since Obamacare is the job of destroying families, it's going to work. Uh, I had a chance to talk to my insurance guy today. And uh, my premium of uh, this year has been... Per month, hold up. I've been telling everybody twenty nine hundred, but it's actually twenty two thousand eight hundred and seventy six dollars per month is my premium for a family of four. Ooh. I got the good news though. <clears throat> it's only that's right two thousand eight hundred seventy nine dollars. <clears throat> the new total brrr, next year, January first, I only got to pay three thousand two hundred and ninety nine and nine cents. The nine cents don't bother me. That's a four hundred. That's a four hundred and twenty dollar month increase. So guess what, Daniel? We celebrate. We're going out to eat tonight. We better because we want. We won't be able to pay for our premium in January. That's Obamacare. Enjoy it while you can. Yes, yes. <laughs> I better take that four hundred fifty dollars and and uh, and put that to good use because uh, that was that's Obamacare. So you can tell Daniel when I see somebody on TV going, "Hey, I just went to." Um, uh, what is it? Governmentinsurance.gov, whatever, dot gov. And I only pay $19 a month. I'm going, I, I, it's everything I could do to go through the TV and pull somebody's hair out. $19 well, a month. For him. Now, look, they don't, they think they got good insurance. They really don't. But they're $19 no. a month. And that's what Obamacare has done to everybody, not just me. It is absolutely Well, you insanity. remember they, they, they have very cleverly stopped calling it the Affordable Care Act. That was the whole <laughs> name yeah. of the program. The biggest misnomer maybe in history. You know what he said? You don't remember what he said? Oh, I'll put $2,500 back in your pocket. <laughs> well, guess what? No, he didn't. He took $2,500 to $3,000 more out of my pocket a month. And I just saw that and well, I went, oh, my God. I mean, all they do it on a middle, I'm very middle class, as middle class as you get. All they like to do is beat up on the middle class. That's what the left does to people. Unbelievable. No question. And my guess is your deductible is relatively high, such that you got to pay tens of thousands of dollars before you get any benefit from uh, from insurance coverage. Oh, my, it my, really is my unbelievable. De- my deductibles, I don't even like to talk about that. I mean, no. it's just... And by the way, that's not why I brought you on. <laughs> Daniel Erspon, <laughs> Matthew James, Business Tax Reduction Hotline. No, uh, uh, it's, I, I can't help myself. Dave. I saw that, so I was down there. They got this young girl. And she started working the, I don't know, six months to a year ago. Just bought her first house, and she's so excited. She's breath of fresh air for young people coming out of school, going to work. And I told her, if you ever get down. I said, you ever get down? She said, yeah, sometime I might get down. I said, if you ever get down, think of me. She went, oh, my God. <laughs> so I told her what my insurance was per month, and she sat there stunned. And I said, thank you, Barack Obama, trying to destroy one family at a time. 
All right, Daniel, uh, right. I appreciate you calling. Uh, you know, you've been on a bandwagon about uh, reform. I, I don't want you, and I told you this before, We this is not a uh, go after Jeff plan. Because I want to, I told no. people, you, there's a lot to like in it. And Jeff brought up a great question. He says, anything you like in it? So uh, uh, from your perspective, there's a lot of things that y'all been harping on for a long time. And I have too. Absolutely. I mean, you and I have been talking about this for at least five or, or six years, these very same principles. And it is without a question, the most bold and aggressive plan to reform the tax code, lower, flatten the income tax, get ready to phase it out, flatten the corporate tax, remove the franchise tax. Uh, you know, the, these all mirror things that we've been proposing and talking about, and our newest edition of that proposal came out yesterday. Um, this is a time to be excited and have consensus around uh, doing big, bold things to bring our kids and grandkids home and, and ensure we have uh, good economic growth. You know, one of the things that y- that y'all did back in the day, me and you argued about taxes and the tax things that I don't remember if it passed or failed, to be honest with you. But <laughs> but we talked about it, and you you mentioned triggers, and 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 last year was a good example. Not this session, but last year when some triggers were supposed to kick in, and the, the Senate uh, President and the House Speaker decided they weren't going they weren't going to allow it to kick in where we were going to get a break. And I know some of their plans has to do with triggers. Why do you like triggers? Because some other people use them and they use them right, but it seems like when triggers are used here. And last time y'all had triggers to kick in for a tax break, an income tax break, we didn't get it. Uh, that's right. We we do like triggers, but they have to. They have you have to have a legislature that lets them work, or I think you know learn some lessons about how to make them stronger, how to make it harder for lawmakers to get around them. Look, a legislature, good, bad. You know, we've got some great folks serving in the legislature, but the 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 incentives are all built around spending more money. Everybody's calling. Their local government's calling. The schools are calling. Everybody calls them. Everyone goes up and, and asks for more money. And so the incentives are just built in. So the beauty of triggers and the beauty of uh, triggers, especially tied to a, a meaningful expenditure limit, mean that it locks that in and it makes, it forces legislators who are smart and thoughtful to prioritize spending in the right places and it makes sure we can uh, efficiently lower income taxes and lower the tax burden without causing some big major disruption. Okay. So you th- we hold- like them for lots of reasons. Hold your thought. We'll be right back. Dan Yars, Palmer Pelican Institute. We'll be right back. If you are a loved one or suffering from addiction, listen to Springfield Wellness Center's founder, Paula Norris Medea. We help people through their detox with minimal withdrawal symptoms. Even though it's a 10-day treatment, I look at the first four or five days as the brain restoration piece. And when the brain restoration piece turns on, that's when we have patients go, wow, a light bulb turned on or a switch was turned on. All of a sudden, their prefrontal cortex is working. (laughs) And their midbrain is also working. They're not craving. They're thinking clearly. They see things clearly. And they have more confidence. Put your addiction behind you. Call Springfield Wellness Center, 225-755-9566. Just call us. That's all. And we'll be waiting for you. 225-755-9566. 755-9566. Springfield Wellness Center. Springfieldwellnesscenter.com been bragging about Dino Hardwoods for a long time, a good friend, Charles Altman. They do an excellent job. And if you're looking for unique or hard-to-find hardwood, lumber, plywood, and molding, is Dino Hardwoods. That's where you need to go. DinoHardwoods.com. DinoHardwoods.com. Trust Dino Hardwoods for all your hardwood, lumber, and cypress needs. With the holiday season fast approaching, as you know, a timeless handmade gift using quality lumber by Dino just means more. With three great locations to serve you now, Broussard, Louisiana, Shreveport, Louisiana, and now he's expanded in Tyler, Texas. Folks, there's something for every discerning woodworker at Dino. Go to DinoHardwoods.com, DinoHardwoods.com, and check out the unique and hard-to-find hardwood, lumber, plywood, and molding that you can't just find anywhere. Charles Altman, trust me, is not a better man in the business. He knows what he's doing, and he wants to service you. 
DinoHardwoods.com. DinoHardwoods.com. Have you been suffering? Hi, I'm Dale Brown, best-selling techno-thriller author. I'm also a mission pilot and squadron commander in the Civil Air Patrol. The members of the Civil Air Patrol are volunteer professionals who serve their communities and their nation every day with emergency services, aerospace education, and cadet programs. We train hard, we fly hard, and we get the job done for America. Join the Civil Air Patrol. Visit www.gocivilairpatrol.com and let's go flying. This hour brought to you by the Matthew James Tax Pros. Find them online at matthewjamestaxpros.com. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you back with us. Matthew James Business Tax Reduction Hotline. And on that hotline, I'm going to have Daniel Erst Palmer, CEO and president of the uh, Pelican Institute. Does a great job. The organization has been around for a while. He's been one of the guys trying to get the legislature, the governors to all listen to say we can make changes to make Louisiana better. They've offered plan after plan after plan. Uh, and he's got another. Daniel, you. Y'all have got a plan right now that's out there as well, by the way. And I I don't know if it goes parallel pretty much with the governor or a little change a few, but y'all have got a plan out there as well. And uh, it, it probably has a lot of similarities, if I'm betting, if I, I, if I can look at all the plans. It, yeah, absolutely it does. You know, we, we first proposed this structure – uh, two or three years ago, um, we've been updating it every year as updated numbers come in because what, the way we approach this is to uh, really get into the research, do a, a dynamic score, do economic modeling on it. So uh, this is an update. And, and as we continue to learn and see what other states do, but the basic structure here is phase out the personal income tax, flatten and begin to phase out the corporate income tax, remove the corporate franchise tax, which folks who, who aren't paying it may not realize this is a tax you pay whether you make money or not. It's, it's, mm-hmm. I like to call it a, a cover charge just for getting in the door to do business in Louisiana. Wow. Crazy. All these, it is. We have all these punishing taxes. So this is about flattening, simplifying, and lowering the tax burden uh, on Louisiana families and doing it in a thoughtful, responsible way. Yeah, no doubt about it. Now, when, when – because I'm curious because Jeff mentioned something. I had already known this. The Tax Foundation Business Tax Climate Ranking, uh, 40, 40th to 8th if we pass everything that the governor wants right. to do. That is gigantic. Uh, does the Tax Foundation Business Tax Climate Ranking rank y'all plan or you, you don't have it ranked? Uh, we we did ask them. It's it's very similar. Um, our 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 approach on on corporate taxes is very similar to what the governor has proposed, um, and and just the overall business climate. So I think maybe maybe our plan was was eight or nine something in in that very same uh, pretty close park is uh, pretty close. So uh, you, because so the plans align pretty close. That's what I was asking. If you line them side by side, there's going to be a lot of similarities, which is good. It's 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 a good thing. Because I know the plan y'all had was really solid. The problem I got, and this is what I want you to address, how hard is it to get through the legislature and especially yeah. the Senate? Because let's be blunt, they're the best plan in the world. It don't take many people to shoot something down. I, I could, and I'm different. I don't care about the lobbyists. I don't care about state government. I don't care about local government. I don't. That's all we focus on. This focuses on the, the right side of the, the, the table because the engine – for economic development is the private sector. It is not government. The government is the caboose. I think we've gotten it wrong. We've had the caboose at the front with the engine pushing it up. I, I just don't think that's right. Yeah, that's right. You know, when we've, I'll use air quotes here, tackled some of these fiscal issues in the past, the framing is all around how do we solve government's problem? How do we close this projected budget deficit? How do we spend more money? How do we raise more revenue? The fact of the matter is tax policy and spending policy, that fiscal house, is really about creating an environment where Louisiana families and businesses can thrive. And the this is the, what, what what's being tackled here now is the really the biggest vestige uh, of the Huey Long government, where everything had to flow through Baton Rouge. It was complex so that you could pick winners and losers, and the government had a lot of power to do that. And we've 
We've seen the results of that. Businesses, people fleeing the state. Uh, you know, I, I, I talk in every corner of the state, and every time I ask people, raise your hand if you've had a, a family member have to leave Louisiana to find work. And every time I ask, it's heartbreaking. Most of the hands in the room go up. That's what we're trying to reverse here by tackling the status quo, getting in there and getting a good tax policy in place. Yeah, now, yeah let, me, let me grab something a little deeper. Uh, and, I, and I talked to the governor about this for a lot just a while ago, but I, I, don't, I don't feel like, not him, but I'm just to put this in general. I talked about spending. I try to talk about spending a lot. And the government spending is way out of contra- control. It's out of control nationally. It's out of control state. A lot of times it's out of control locally. But at least state and, and federal, we know it's totally out of control. If, if you don't address in this state the spending side of the ledger, I'm not saying he's not. I'm saying to me, yeah. and you don't find a way to do something about these insurance rates, those two will cost us having the type of reform that I think Jeff, the governor, is trying to push for. Those two have got to have some massive reforms that make a difference now. Am I wrong? Am I way off by saying that? Because if I am, explain it to me, because I'd like to know if I'm way off by saying this. No, I don't. I think you've hit the nail on the head, and I would add one more, which is education and workforce. So, you know, big, big uh, uh, congratulations and, and credit go to the governor and the legislature for passing education freedom, getting that Gator uh, scholarship program that needs to be funded this year. That's very, very important. Uh, and, and the work he's doing to, to really drive a workforce agenda. If you add that and look at um, all of these pieces, but there's no question spending has to be addressed. And it's not just a one-time thing. I think, you know, the, uh, it's a process. It absolutely is. And it's not going to be solved in one fell swoop. But the, we've seen this, we've studied this, we've looked at other states who've done tax reform. Every single one of them that's been successful has tackled spending. I, I talked to the governor of Arizona recently. You may remember he spoke yes. at our summit this spring. You know, one of the things that, that he points to that helped them get to the, the I think, 2.5% tax rate is there are 5,000 fewer government workers today than there were when he took office. Yeah. And they didn't do that by big layoffs. They but, did it smartly and, and looked at controlling those spending. By the way, there's the correlation that I'm trying to make to everybody that we just, you can't, I just get concerned about uh, not being able to look at that side of the ledger and go, we got to do something about this. And we know for a fact, I don't know if it's 10 or 20% turnover in state government, there's got to be a way to start cutting some of that stuff down. Now, Jeff did when he came in office one of the efficiencies yep. in all his department. And I think some of them came back with millions of dollars of efficiency, and that was good. And I think they need more of that. But you got to look at when a department loses. You know, if you got a department that has 500 people and you're going to lose 50 to 100 people, you got to look at maybe not filling that spot and sending money back. So we, that would be a great efficiency. I know they've been trying to do that. That, that, that's right. And, you know, you talk to, I've, and I have, the the leaders of these agencies and there, uh, the governor has given them a directive to look for efficiencies, look for ways to, as he said, do more with less. And that is genuine and real and in progress. The thing about something like an expenditure limit, I always remind our friends, is politics is a pendulum. And the, the person who's in office now, whether it's the governor, the legislature, anything else, will not always be there. And that's why we set rules like this. That's why there are guidelines in place so that the operating philosophy I know is dominant with, with the, the, the folks in, in power now, which is let's try to streamline government. Let's try to be more efficient. Let's try to lower taxes will not always be the case. That's why we have to put these meaningful things in place to protect people, to protect pocketbooks, and protect the tax policy we're all working so hard to get done. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right. The, uh, it's just, whew, this is a hard thing to do in our state. Now, look, he pointed that out, though. You know, we had, I told people, eight years of bail would set us back. I'm going to say it, you don't have to. It set us way back. There was no good government. Everything was just how much money can you get in and keep the train rolling. That was a bad eight years for the state of Louisiana. In my opinion, horrible state eight years. And so you got everything that was before that and eight more really horrible years. And then the budget, and the budget is skyrocketing. There's a lot to do now, a lot to do to get back on track. 
No, no doubt about it. And the, the enemies of reform, the people who benefit from complexity, who benefit from big government, are going to throw out all, put out all the stops to try to stop this thing. Uh, and it is so valuable, so important for us uh, to really come together, work together. This, this is a, a, a process, you know, as we head into the next month and the legislature will come into, uh, into session. They're all looking and studying and reading these bills now and figuring out where they want to be. And I think if we can come together, we can get a package that's just a home run uh, and, and get some real enthusiasm. This is what voters asked for. Let me just cite this real quick. We had a poll last fall. We asked about taxes. We asked about spending. 58% of voters said they want to phase out the personal income tax. And this next one I was so surprised that 66% of voters said limited spending growth to bring fiscal responsibility was the right thing to do. So we have broad support, a mandate from voters to limit the growth of government and uh, implement a tax plan like what the governor and the Pelican Institute and others have suggested. And this can lead, our, our numbers say uh, two, uh, $2 billion in economic growth and 5,000 new jobs in the first year alone. Yeah. All right, let me take a break. Daniel Erst Palmer, Pelican Institute. We'll come back and wrap up with Daniel. Uh, Daniel, appreciate you being part of the program. We'll take a break. Be back. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Nestled in gently rolling hills in North Louisiana is a place that produces the finest Louisiana wines around, Landry Vineyards. This place is phenomenal. Not only are they passionate about growing wine grapes and making Landry Vineyards wine, they also have cottages and RV sites you can rent, tours, and live music on Saturdays and tastings Monday through Saturday. Available in over 650 stores throughout Louisiana, I encourage you to visit and try Landry Wine direct from Landry Vineyards. This is another great Louisiana company that has my full support, and they are Louisiana certified. A red blend they labeled Bayutage, Blackberry Merlot, Cabs, Rosé, Petite Sarah, dry and sweet whites, and many, many other wines. Learn more about their wines and their vineyard online at LandryVineyards.com. This is Moon Graffon. My lovely bride and I love the wines from this great Louisiana company, Landry Vineyards, and so will you. Go visit their beautiful winery and find them in your local grocery store. If they don't have Landry Vineyards wine, ask and ask again. LandryVineyards.com. Woo, good wine right here. It started with direct messages. That's how they got to my son. Gavin was just 17 and looking forward to college. He was contacted by online predators pretending to be a teenage girl. He was the victim of sexual extortion. In less than two hours after that first message, Gavin died by suicide. It's a pain I don't want any other parent to feel. Social media is causing an epidemic of bullying, anxiety, and depression, and it's leaving kids vulnerable to the kind of predators that targeted my son. We have to hold big tech accountable and pass the Kids Online Safety Act. I couldn't protect my son, but now it's my mission to make sure all kids are protected. I'm a father and a proud conservative, and I'm here to tell Speaker Johnson, pass the Kids Online Safety Act, because nothing is more important than protecting our kids. Paid for by Issue 1 Action, which is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. Issue1action.org. Do you crave... Hey, hello. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you back with us. Matthew James, Business Tax Reduction Hotline. Daniel Ernst Palmer, my special guest. By the way, and I have a guy from the, uh, I think it's from the Heritage Foundation, uh, that will be talking about the debate, Heritage Action, Ron William Walker. So uh, he'll be talking about the debate coming out of the third hour, so you don't want to miss that. All righty, uh, Daniel. Daniel, let me ask you a question because you get to work you get to work with a lot of people outside this state. How long after a plan is passed can we start seeing things? How long should, I mean, 
everything has a process. And Jeff said that, and he, and he rightfully so. Rightfully so. But my question is, how long does it take to start seeing this stuff? Here's the good news. With, with actual reductions in the size and scope of government, which I believe uh, you know, we all are looking for here, you actually start to see the results within the first year. That's what's so amazing. Um, this can have a huge impact. Now, there's no doubt we face some, some tailwinds when it comes to insurance and workforce and some other things that are already on the table to be, uh, to be addressed. Um, but getting this right can have, have an immediate impact. Uh, and then when we look out five to ten years, we're talking about really transformational change. Yeah, the thing that uh, he mentioned was that in January, in January, if they do the tax where they get back to a more of a flat tax, that you will fill out your pocketbooks when you get your first check after working a week or two in, a, uh, in, in the first the new year when it kicks in. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you what That's people right, do, right and away. I think you know this. Okay, I've been working with myself for a long my wife's get our money, so I, <laughs> I don't know what we get. But anyway, <laughs> when she want a pay raise, she gets one. But anyway, I, what I'm saying is I remember working when I worked for people, and it's got to go back a long time. And let's just say you were clearing uh, $500 a week. I'm just throwing a figure. You were clearing. You might have made six fifty or whatever it was a week, but you were clearing 500 to keep this even. And you got your paycheck, and it had $522.52 in it. You go, Wow. I got some more money. I must have got a raise. Well, you got a raise because they had an income tax break. And that's so right. that's the kind of things you would notice an hourly worker person would notice. Wow. Now you say, well, 22 bucks or 44 bucks in a month doesn't sound like much, but that's rent money. That's money to go out to eat. That's, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just money. And so, but it's extra money and it's in your pocket. You might have to, you might have a bill that you need to pay that's, a 20 something dollars on it you got to pay whatever but you do recognize that when you get that when you get that check it, absolutely you feel it right away families feel it right away uh and you know what else happens is the rest of the world notices uh and and all of a sudden when we don't make the list for someone who's looking to move uh or a company who's looking to move now all of a sudden we're there because they see change coming and and that's just huge so we'll, we'll we may not feel the full impact for two or three or four years but we'll start to see the uh the, the we'll start to feel it almost immediately and, and that's why it's so urgent to do that how do you when you're going through a tax plan like this how do we be back on the media the, the negative like the devil's advocate how do you beat these people back Every angle they can take, they're going to try to beat it just because Jeff's name's on there. Every angle. And I know what Jeff's – Jeff's crying out going, hey, y'all got to help me. We can't do this. And I get that. Yep. But the media yep. and some of the leftists and a bunch of the lobbyists ain't going to like this. So all of a sudden it's, it's, it's a bad idea. I don't think it's a bad idea. I think it's a very good idea. I think that, you know, there's always going to be tweaked stuff. People can always ask questions. But – how do you fight the media, Daniel, when you're trying to pass? You know this from battles you've won and lost. Yeah. Yeah, the only way to, to overcome it is to go straight to the people. We know we have the people's support on this. The governor has the people's support on tackling this big idea. We've got to out-argue them. We have the right argument. We have the moral high ground. The numbers are in our favor. The question is, how quickly can we get out in front? And so certainly you and I and, and, and lots of folks have been talking about this issue, the voters, for a long time, and, and they support us. So the best way to do it is go straight to the people and, and don't rely on the uh, on the filter of the media. But that said, we've got to engage them too. make the argument there. It's going to be a hard sell, but but leave no stone unturned. This is going to take well, an all-out effort from everyone involved. It, it's a hard sell because they want the government to have plenty of money, and then the lobbyists want to make plenty of money. That makes the hard sell. You know, people that don't want anything to change in this state is because they're doing pretty damn good. No, no question about it. That's the way it's designed. Uh, it's it's designed to protect the status quo, and what's on the table here is disrupting that apple cart uh, to help Louisiana families rather than those those folks in the entrenched status quo. Yeah, incredible, man! It's unbelievable. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean, this is going to be a uh, this is a work in progress, and that's why I asked Jeff about the process from uh, 
November with the session all the way till they finished six, seven months. And then he brought up the point that when on the income tax, low on the income tax, they'll fill it in January. But I think, you, I, are you worried about, this is one thing I get worried about, and I'm mentioning it to him. Uh, and your, your plan, his plan, don't matter. If things get watered down and you only pass portions of it, that would probably be a train wreck somewhat, wouldn't it? Not because, you, because it depends on what parts pass and what parts fail. Yeah, it, it's a real tightrope walk, which is why it's so important that we get the plan right and get everybody excited about it, um, because that's how we get this across the finish line. And and we've got to protect against, of course, it's a process. Of course, whatever it starts with, there's going to be tweaks to it. People learn new things. They come up with other ideas. That's the way this works, and I think that's great. Um, we've got to make sure that moves upward we we make it better not worse and uh and the the core principles that have been outlined whether it's in our plan or the governor's plan they're right on um and and now's our chance to make sure and push hard through that legislature and help help legislators understand what this means you know they're they're dealing with a lot of issues it's a part-time job we all have to do what we can to help them understand the issues as well and make sure they're armed to make the best decisions they can yeah we're not we're not going to change unless we change I mean, that sounds like a little Yogi Bear cliche, but I'm just saying you don't change if you never try to change. This is uh, this is really, really bold. I got questions. I'm going to continue to have my questions, but it's really, really bold. When I look back, and I've been doing this since Edwin Edwards was governor, since 93, and I've never seen anybody ever try to do what Jeff's trying to do. And that's coming off of eight years of making government the most stable thing in the state of Louisiana is government through Bill Edwards. More money, more money, more tax, more federal money, and that made it harder to get off of the uh, get off of the uh, you know the crack cocaine called government. You nailed it. That's it. We, we've got to make this change. We've got to be a bit of a bull in a china cabinet to get this through uh, because it's a lot of folks who have uh, have a lot at stake uh, for doing the same old thing the same old way we've been doing it. Yeah, it's uh, it's time for change. Daniel, always a pleasure. God bless, man. Same. Same to you. Thanks, Moon. All right, man. God bless. All right, that wraps up this hour. You want to keep listening. You're not in the Kadiana area. Go to moongraphon.com. Listen live. Moongraphon.com. Listen live. You can always comment. You, oh, I read all your comments when you email me. Moon at moongraphon.com. We'll take a break. Be right back. For the absolute best in local Cajun food, check out Prejean's in their two locations in Karen Crow and Broussard today. Um, News Talk 96.5 KPEL, Brobridge, Lafayette, a town square media station broadcasting from the Matthew James Tax Pro Studio. The U.S. urging action at the U.N. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. A day after Iran's missile attack on Israel, U.S. Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield says the U.N. Security Council should impose more sanctions on Iran's Revolutionary Guard. This attack, intended to cause significant death and destruction, marked a significant escalation by Iran. The U.S. also rejecting Iran's claim it was a defensive strike after the killing of Hamas and Hezbollah leaders. It's been a deadly day for Israeli troops in Lebanon, where they continue to target Hezbollah. The Israeli military confirming that eight of their soldiers were killed in battle today. We know five of them were from the Egoz commando unit, and they lost their lives in a firefight with Hezbollah in a village in southern Lebanon. Fox's Trey Yinks, the Israeli security cabinet, meeting earlier to discuss the possible response to Iran's missile attack. Up to a thousand active duty U.S. troops are heading to hurricane duty. President Biden authorizing it to help reinforce the National Guard in North Carolina, where they are still searching for residents stranded by Helene and struggling to deliver life-saving supplies. Buncombe County, home to Asheville, was hard hit. And County Manager Avril Pender says many people are still calling for help six days into the response effort. We continue to see calls from 911 slowly decrease in volume. 
but non-emergency calls are not decreasing. At least 57 people have been found dead in Buncombe County alone, which has the most reported Helene deaths in the state. It's unclear how many are still missing. Fox's Tanya J. Powers, Helene is now blamed for more than 160 deaths in all. President Biden visits North Carolina today, while Vice President Harris will get a recovery briefing in Georgia, where former President Trump went Monday. New York City Mayor Eric Adams back in court for a hearing on the corruption charges he denies. Federal prosecutors telling the judge more charges are possible. America is listening to Fox News. If you're looking for a firearm, I just love and recommend highly Henry Repeating Arms. They make 200 models of rifles, shotguns, revolvers, and a wide variety of calibers and finishes. Plus, they have new releases all throughout the year. The best way to learn about Henry Firearms is to get their free catalog and check it out online or at home. Plus, you're going to get two free decals and a list of dealers where you live and a great newsletter. Go to HenryUSA.com, click on their free catalog button. It's in the upper right-hand corner. Henry uses old-world craftsmanship combined with cutting-edge technology to deliver reliability and accuracy that everybody can trust. They're easy to use and maintain. It makes them an excellent choice for personal and property defense, for hunting, for shooting sports, and for beginners. All made in America, or they won't be made at all. Remember, to order their free catalog, get free decals, Henry USA, one word, dot com. That's Henry USA dot com. Free catalog and decals and a list of dealers where you are. You're going to love this company. A court appearance for the former Kentucky sheriff accused of gunning down a judge. Former Letcher County Sheriff Sean Steins in court for an evidence hearing where prosecutors played video Tuesday, showing a man identified by police as Steins pulling out a gun and shooting District Judge 54-year-old Kevin Mullins. As he sat at his desk inside his chambers September 19th, he died of multiple gunshot wounds. Kentucky State Police Detective Clayton Stamper testifying that he talked to Steins after he arrived on scene. Basically all he said was treat me fair. That's, that's basically the comments he made. Right now no motive for the shooting Steins who's resigned from his position has pled not guilty though faces 20 years to life in prison if convicted. Jeff Manasso, Fox News. A federal appeals court just upholding a lower court order that allows betting on election outcomes. The court finding that the Commodity Futures Trading Commission did not show how it or the public interest would be harmed by allowing a New York derivatives platform to continue with its event contracts. A somber start to a favorite ritual in Alaska. A program meant to help spread understanding of an Alaska ecosystem is shaken by a deadly bear-on-bear -bear attack. At the Katmai National Park and Preserve, just as Fat Bear Week was kicking off, the contest's bracket reveal delayed a day until Tuesday after the skirmish caught live on webcam, which showed a female Alaskan grizzly killed by a male one. Park and contest officials saying national parks protect the wonders of nature, but also the harsh realities. The popular contest to determine the fattest bear in southern Alaska has been around for a decade and allows the public to weigh in on favorite contestants as they fatten up on salmon and prepare for hibernation. Fox's Lillian Wu. Stocks are higher. Right now, the Dow's up 54 points. Elisa Brady. This is Fox News. It's time to win cash. Get your KPL News apps ready because here's your chance to win up to $30,000. Just enter the following code into your KPL News app where it says win cash and make sure you listen for more codes throughout the day because the more codes you enter, the better your chances. Here is your next code. Here it is, your 11 o'clock code 705705. That's your code for a chance to win cash with News Talk 96.5 KPL.